So this is going to be a very short lecture because I want to finish our frequency response by discussing the emitter follower and then next uh, time I want to start a new topic uh, and uh, it's uh, there's not enough time to start the new topic in this lecture. So let's start off. So this is the emitter follower circuit, the input at the base and the output at the emitter. There is no collector resistance. This circuit we had discussed in lecture 12, slide 7. Again, the DC numbers are there, the AC numbers are there. These have all been the same for all our configurations uh, in the last few lectures. So we will we'll discuss only the high frequency response of this circuit because there is really nothing new uh, in the low frequency response. In fact, you can see that here. This is the same circuit as the common emitter amplifier as far as the low frequency response is concerned uh, if you don't include CE. Uh, so you can do it on your own. Uh, we'll quickly do the high frequency response. So we'll draw the small signal circuit so that CB will be shorted and we'll have C pi and C mu. So C mu will be from base to Collector, collector is ground, so C mu will be from base to ground and C pi will be between base and emitter, neither of the terminals of C pi will be ground. Okay, so here is the circuit. Achha, again, uh, this R1, R2 will be in parallel with each other, base to ground, base to ground. So R1 parallel R2 we will call Rb. So that goes from base to ground, C mu from base to ground, C pi from base to emitter, R pi base to emitter, R e and G m V B E. So in fact, this could be just G m V B. No, I'm sorry, V B E. Correct. Uh, now, even this circuit is uh, tedious to solve on paper. So for our analysis, we'll assume that R b is very large. It's not a bad assumption, it's not a very good one, uh, but we'll make it anyway. So we'll assume that RB is large and therefore we'll simply ignore it, we'll just remove it from this circuit. So the circuit we'll get is uh, this, so everything else is here and uh, so we'll have two nodes and we'll write two nodal equations. So for V, in the emitter node, get VE by RE, VE minus VB by R pi. V e minus V b into S c pi plus G m V e b or V e minus V b. <coughs> so four terms, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, four terms and they have only V e and V b. So we multiply out by R e R pi and then we can write V b in terms of V e, uh, this big expression by this, so this R e into one, 1 plus beta we will get in the numerator and denominator. Then we write an equation at the base node again 1, 2, 3, 4 terms Vb minus Vs by Rs, Sc mu Vb, Sc pi Vb minus Ve and Vb minus Vb by R pi. 4 terms equal to 0. We multiply out by Rs R pi and then we will get Vb, Ve and Vs on the right hand side. So now we substitute for Vb from here into this equation and then we take Ve out. So we will get one big expression for Ve times something equal to R pi Vs. So this big, big expression and then we uh, multiply, cross multiply this denominator with this and the denominator goes to the other side and then we will simplify the left hand side. So this R e beta R e as C pi R e R pi goes on the right hand side and on the left hand side we will get uh, so this times this gives an S squared term. We showed there are two capacitors there should be an S squared term. So this is uh, V e into something big equal to something into V s. So, so on R pi incidentally will cancel here. And this is the final expression. So again, sit and derive it yourself. Uh, so this is the way this is written is because this is a high frequency transfer function. 
we have the mid band gain and the polynomials we write as 1 plus something uh, we keep the uh, 0th order term as 1 so 1 to there is 1 0 which is in fact r pi by beta so that's gm so this is c pi by gm uh, there are two s terms uh, make sense right so one corresponding to c mu one corresponding to c pi and then there is an s squared term and then if you put in all the values i have put in all the values here uh, and find the numericals then this is what we get so one plus so incidentally this this is a emitter follower so the mid band gain is basically one because r pi r s would be small compared to beta r e so in this expression there is no mid band well the mid band gain is one so it doesn't appear one zero at 40 giga radians uh, and two poles here these are the time constants so if we evaluate then the dominant pole is at 142 megahertz and the second pole is at 9.3 gigahertz now a couple of notes about this circuit uh, one does not want to apply miller's theorem to an emitter follower uh, i'm leaving it to you to try and apply it because if i tell you then the fun will be lost so you sit and apply it and see what happens it's an interesting experience uh, you will figure out that it's not advisable to apply also so you can see there are of course two capacitors two time constants so theoretically one could uh, apply the use the time open circuit time constant method to find each of these time constants uh, without deriving the transfer function but it turns out that for this specific circuit it is a bit of a challenge because uh, well, let's look at the circuit so we want to find uh, the resistance seen by c mu resistance seen by c mu is actually not that difficult so this source is shorted so it becomes rs parallel r r pi plus re parallel 1 by gm so i'll say it again if you want to check you can check the resistance seen by c mu is rs parallel r pi plus re parallel 1 by gm that is the resistance seen by c mu the resistance seen by c pi is uh, so that i'm leaving it to you that is a tricky one again this is of course a ultimately this is a simple not a simple this is a circuit and you have solved many such circuits last semester so you want to find the thevenin's resistance across these two nodes and you short this and find it so you should be able to find it but i am leaving it to you it is not fun trying to find it so uh, you you figure out for yourself you can find it of course uh, it's possible but it's not fun so anyway in fact the answer is here right the resistance seen by c mu is here uh, okay so this is actually different so what did i i didn't say it right correct correct yeah i'm sorry the resistance seen by so i'm sorry i said it wrong the resistance seen by c mu is rs parallel r pi plus 1 plus beta re that's what it is yeah okay uh, so it's here so good so the answer is here actually the resistance seen by c pi is here actually so the answer is already here so you see if you can get the same answer by applying thevenin's theorem to find the resistance seen by c pi all right so now let's do a comparison of all the three configurations for these first two we had seen last lecture so we added a row for the emit common collector or the emitter follower the mid band gain is gain is one the minus 3 db frequency is high it is higher than 
the other two configurations that kind of makes sense because usually it is a given that as the gain goes down the 3 dB bandwidth goes up uh, but the the consequence of this is that because this is a very high frequency see I'm not going to discuss multi-stage amplifier frequency response partly because there is no time uh, partly because this it's intuitively it can be derived from everything that we have studied so when we have multi-stage amplifiers and if we want to find the frequency response then usually uh, the frequency response of the emitter follower is just ignored because these frequent frequencies are so high that they really don't affect the significant portions of the frequency response which are the first couple of poles uh, the, the, which will be lower in frequency for, for the common emitter or common base amplifiers so th that is the conclusion from this table that generally in multi-stage amplifiers you ignore the frequency response of the emitter follower stage because it really doesn't affect the performance of the amplifier these are in the Bode plot they will be so far away to the right and they will appear when the gain is already much below 0 dB and so you don't care what these values are ok so I am finishing this lecture here now we have only two lectures left which is next week that next week is the last week of classes and those two lectures will spend on the stability and compensation of amplifiers ok